All right, so there's been a lot of delays with uh, battery shipping because there's a huge truck driver shortage and I ordered them from California. So I figured now is probably a good time to talk about how I'm gonna mount these. Uh, so there's gonna be 10 Tesla batteries and each one is about 27 inches long and 12 inches wide and about three and a half inches tall. Um, so here, let me grab the measuring tape. It's kind of hard to do with one hand. But if we do an extra couple of inches, so let's say 30 inches in length, that's most of the, of the uh, interior space here. I did measure vertically, 12 inches will be fine. Uh, 13, 14 also fine. So there, I'm good on height. Uh, and the way that I think I'm going to be arranging them is stacking them vertically, sort of like like this. So six in in line like vertically, which is an unusual orientation. But I have seen some other people do it, and that should work uh, just fine. So there's going to be six up front here, and then four where the gas tank was. The four where the gas tank was will also be vertical. Uh, if for some reason they don't end up fitting, I'll just put uh, whichever ones I can't fit in the trunk. But I'm trying to keep the car, the inside of the car at least, as original as possible. So I would rather avoid doing that. Um, now the only clearance issue that I think I may have is that if each module is three and a half inches times six, that's 21 inches, but more likely around, you know, 23 with the battery box and everything. And this, from here to here, I don't have the clearance, so I'm going to have to either relocate this uh, brake booster, which would be a pain in the ass, or I just keep the battery box over in this section and have it stop before here, uh, which I think is what I'm going to try to do, since there is enough length. I believe there is, let's see. Yeah, it, it'll fit just barely lengthwise without interfering with that. Uh, and then for mounting points, there's an there's an engine mount that I'll grab in just a second that goes right there, and that'll be the left side of the battery box. So I'll reuse that original engine mount. And then what I'm thinking is I'll build some kind of bracket so that I can connect the battery box also to each of the three transmission mounts. Um, so that'll have a four point mounting system, which should be sufficient. It's only gonna be in total, probably about 150 more pounds up front, uh, 150 pounds heavier than stock, so it shouldn't be a big deal. All right, so here's the original engine mount. This sits right here. Bolts, bolts right in onto the frame there. And that supports, um, the le usually it supports the engine. It's the only engine mount, really, because the other three are for the transmission. But that'll be the left side of the battery box mount. And it should, should be able to bear the weight just fine. All right, so I forgot to mention that uh, this, this will also be mounted to the bottom of the battery box. What this is is a clamp mount uh, mounting bracket for the motor. So this goes around it, and then you have two bolt holes that you can use for mounting. So this is going to go um, on the underside of the battery box, and I'll have a reinforcing beam, one of those channels that I'll show you in just a second. And that will be the uh, the mounting point for these two holes. So for the rear battery box, I'm not going to climb under the car because it's uh, kind of hard, hard to film. But this right here is the old gas tank strap. So there's two of these and this is what holds the gas tank in place. Uh, I had to cut it to get it out so I won't be able to reuse this specific one. But new ones are pretty cheap so I'll probably end up buying two more of these and just using this to mount the rear battery box. Uh, I do still have to take some more measurements, but I think it'll all fit perfectly. So here's all the metal for both battery boxes that just came in. I ordered it from uh, metalsdepot.com, I believe. 
good price, uh, ship fast. I would use them again. Um, so this is a copper strip, eighth of an inch thick. I'm going to be using that for bus bars, which I'll talk more about once the batteries come in. Um, and then I have 16 of these steel angles. So what these are going to be for is to form essentially the outline of each of the battery boxes. And then I have two different sizes of steel channels. These ones are one inch tall, and these ones are only half an inch tall. Uh, and those will be for added support on the bottom, as well as for some of these, I'm going to be using them to make some mounts for the boxes, especially for the front battery box. All right, so in my garage here, I've got the metal laid out and approximately what it's going to look like. Obviously, the dimensions are off. <clears throat> um, I haven't made any cuts yet or anything, but um, it's going to be a some some type of rectangle about like this. Uh, these are each four foot pieces and they're going to be cut down to probably about two and a half feet um, to make it the right size for the modules. But that'll be, this. imagine this as like the bottom of one of the boxes and then there will be vertical vertical uh, bits here like this and then another one, another layer similar to this bottom layer on the top. Uh, and on the bottom, there will also be a couple of these support beams. Something like that, uh, but a couple of them. I want to get the battery modules in so I can really see how it'll uh, look and if it's enough or too much overkill, you know. But I got to cut these down and then a bunch of welding pretty much. Um, and another thought I've had is to make it a solid box, uh, you know, without big openings on the sides, is to buy like vinyl, like planks or something, and then just put them on the bottom and on the sides and screw them in or bolt them in, drill some bolt holes here and bolt them in on every side. Um, so I am Definitely still looking for feedback on that, so let me know what you think.